Python makes it easy to create and update complex business rules that are deployed as web services. Let's see how to model a rule based on a condition and test the execution of that rule in our development environment. Our scenario involves grocery store checkout computers. The law requires the grocery store to check the age of any customer purchasing liquor. This video demonstrates how to create a rule that detects when a customer is purchasing liquor and reminds the clerk to check the customer's ID. A good first step when creating a rule is to model the entities, attributes, and associations. This UML diagram shows the model that we will use for the grocery store project. In Corticon Studio, I created a Corticon project and defined the data model as a Corticon vocabulary. When we expand the customer entity, notice how the associations imply a hierarchy. A customer has a preferred card, a customer has a shopping cart, and a customer's shopping cart has items. To handle the case where a customer tries to purchase liquor, let's create a rule sheet from the menu command. We name the file Checks and go Next. We choose our vocabulary file name, Grocery Store dot ecore, and then Finish. We choose the Advanced View so we can define the scope section of the rule sheet. Scope is a powerful and important concept. It helps us tell the Corticon rule engine which data to use when evaluating and executing rules. We drag the customer to the scope area. Then we drag the shopping cart association within the customer and drop it on the customer in the rule sheet. We want the system to process not just any shopping cart, but this customer's shopping cart. We open the shopping cart's alias entry and assign it the alias current cart. Now let's do the same for items in a shopping cart and assign it the alias items. These aliases will be used in our rules. We will need aliases in our rules when we start to use collection operators. Our first test is to see if we have items from the liquor department, code 291. We determine that from the barcode so we need to bring the barcode and item attributes into our scope. Now we drag the scoped department to an actions line. We edit the line to add equals the department portion of the barcode. Specifically, open quote equals items dot barcode dot substring open paren four comma six close paren close quotes. Then we check the column zero checkbox to show that this is a non-conditional rule. It always applies. We need to see if any items came from Department 291, Liquor. Since we only need one alert per checkout transaction, we use a collection operator, which will evaluate once per collection, and not once per item. We add a condition. The simplest test says if there is any item code for liquor department, the test is true. Our collection test is shown here. And then T in column 1. So what is the action? We check the customer's ID. Enter current cart dot check ID and in column 1 enter T. We add a warning statement that will post on the clerk's screen, saying that the clerk must check the ID. Time for a test. We will create a rule test to try our rule sheet. We drag the entities and attributes we are using into the test. And then add test data. 
Note that we do not enter the department. Our rule will get it from the barcode. Choose the menu command, Rule Test, Run All Tests. Our Condition Action Rule works. We have Check ID True and a message. We change the department from 291 to 290 and test again. Correct. No Check ID and no message. We save the test into our project. That concludes our look at how to create and test a rule.